I'll be showing eight new features in Teams assignments. This includes the much requested group assignments, return for revision, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is the redesigned assignments and UI entry point on what we call the left rail. I'm here in Teams for Education and I'm gonna drill into one of my classes. Let's go into Science. What you'll notice is that we've taken things like assignments, class notebook, and grades, and instead of being in the general channel across the top, they're now automatically kept right over here for easy access. And then channels are right below that. So this organization is much easier to wrap your head around around where everything is. So for example, if I click into assignments, these are the assignments for this class. Here are the three assignments. If I want to go to the class notebook, I can switch there. And you'll also notice that we've pre-installed and pre-pinned Insights right here. So Insights is always available. And this is rolling out right now. The second new feature is group assignments. Group assignments allow the teacher to make an assignment to groups of different students that can be manually configured or randomized. And I'll show you how to do that. So in assignments here, go down to create and choose assignment. Let's give it a quick title and instructions. Okay, this is going to be a periodic table group project and each of the groups is gonna turn in a research paper and a presentation on one of the periodic elements that they choose. Now what we're gonna do is go to the student assignment area and drop this down and you'll see a new choice that is groups of students. You've had individual students in the past and now we can make them groups as well. So let's choose this. First choice is how do we wanna group those students? And I'll choose manually group students first. Click create groups. Now what I can do for group one, I can choose different students. So I will have, let's see, these three students here and I will click create, that's group one. Now you can see group one has Matt, Henry and Delpha and there's 10 out of 13 students remaining. If I wanna edit that group, I can click the little pencil. Maybe you wanna add a student, I can, maybe you're gonna add Bunny into this group as well. So now there's four students in that group. And now if I wanna do a new group, I go here and these are the remaining students. So I'm gonna have Henry, Rosie, and Clark. Click that group. That's group two. And I'll quickly fill out the other groups as well. Okay, those are my four groups. And you can give them different names, like the red group, the green group, and you can even filter by name. So if you have a lot of students in your class, you can search by certain students with that filter there. And let's say you decide you don't like those groups, and I can recreate those groups. So in this case, I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna start over, I'm gonna randomize the groups. So I'll click recreate groups. And yep, I wanna discard all these groups that I've created. And this time I'm gonna choose randomly group students. So I want four groups and it tells me each group will have three to four students. So it kind of divides the number of groups by the students you have in the class. Click create groups. Hey, pretty slick, it creates those groups randomized right there. And again, if I wanna edit those in particular or tweak a little bit, I can click that edit button. But now I'll click done. And the way it works is, and I'll show this, each group turns in a single document and presentation in this case, that's what the instructions say. So each individual doesn't turn in their own thing, the group turns in that work, and then the teacher can grade those projects. It's pretty slick. So I'll go up here and click assign. Okay, let's sign in as Alex, one of the group project members, and see how this works on his side. So I'm signed in as Alex, I'll go to assignments, and here's my periodic table group project. So I'm gonna open this up. Here's the assignment and you can see there's a group label here. So Alex can see who else is in the group. If I click here, I can see it's Alex, Kara, Bunny, and Matt. So let's say that I speed ahead now and Alex is gonna be the one who turns in for the group. Note that it says turn in for group. So each student doesn't turn in individually, one student can turn in for that whole group. Okay, Alex has added the magnesium document and the magnesium presentation, which are the required pieces for this assignment. And I'm gonna click turn in for group. Now note, another person who is in this project, if they try to go turn in, it'll show that the assignment is already turned in. So if later on someone like Bunny or Kara tries to turn in the project, they won't be able to because Alex just turned it in. Now we'll go back to the teacher and take a look at grading this group project. I'm signed back in as the teacher and for assignments right here, I'm gonna drill into periodic table group project. Now immediately you will see that these are now divided up by groups. Instead of just the full student list in this case for this assignment, it's divided by groups. And I can click on any specific student in that group. Let's click on Alex and it brings up all of the different students in that group project. So it pulls up the PowerPoint deck that they submitted as well as the document and I can go through the speed grader just like I normally would, but in this case, it's the group mode. So I can give group project feedback. So if I was giving it for the group, I could say, you know, 
great job, 17 points. But what's also interesting is I can individually grade the students as well. So students in the group, I can give them all the same points and feedback and rubric, but I could also click here and say grade students individually. So if I click this, it actually splits up each student separately, which is really kind of nice. Now, you know, maybe uh, this person here did a little bit better because I could tell they did extra work. And yeah, maybe Alex actually didn't do as good as I thought. And maybe he was more like 14 points. And I can go back to grade students as a group and it will collapse that again, just like that. So for this specific scenario, I'm just going to give some feedback and points for the entire group. And I'm going to click return. Also in the speed grader drop down here, just like you normally would go through students, I can go here and cycle through the different groups or I could click the little arrow here and go to the next group. Now when I close that back in this list under return, if I go here, you can see that the group got 17 points. I can drill in and see the feedback for the entire group and I can go over here and wait for the other groups to turn in their projects. The third new feature is return for revision. This has been another top requested feature to let teachers return an assignment for a student to make revisions before the final grade. I have this Amazon rainforest assignment that I've made as a teacher. Now I'm going to drill in and it looks like Alex here has turned it in. Let's open this up. Okay, here is the Amazon rainforest document that Alex put in. Now let's say I'm going through and I discovered, oh, there's a set of things that I really need Alex to do. So I might give some feedback here that says, Maybe Alex didn't add any images and that was gonna be a requirement for this document. Now, instead of just the return button, now I can drop this arrow down and choose return for revision. So this means I'm not gonna officially return this yet. I'm gonna have him revise it and then resubmit it. So I'll choose return for revision. And note that right here, it says return for revision at this time. And I can still view the history here. So you can see I signed it and then Alex viewed it and he turned it in, but now I returned for revision. And note in the list here, it says needs revision. So Alex needs to revise. Let's go to Alex's account and see what it looks like there. In my activity feed now, it says assignment return for revision. Okay, well, let's see what happened. I'll view the assignment. And what it says in the upper right is return for revision. And the feedback says, please add some images to the document. Okay, let's open this up and add a couple images quickly. Okay, I've added my images. Now I'm gonna turn in again, click here. And we'll switch back to the teacher. Back as the teacher, I'll go back into my Amazon Rainforest paper, scroll down to the bottom, and now it says turned in again. Great, Alex turned his homework back in. Let's go in. And now I see the images there. Great job, Alex. He gets 10 out of 10. I update the feedback and click return. The fourth new feature is the ability for teachers or students to filter the all assignments list. So let's go over here on the left and click on assignments to see all my assignments. What you'll see is this new drop down at the top. This is the filter. So I drop this down and I can choose a specific class like science, or I can go and choose a different class like this. I could also go and clear the filter, or I could even search by a specific class. So if I type in Spanish, I can choose that right there. So this new filter makes it really easy to quickly hone in on what assignments you're looking for. And this is rolled out for both teachers and students. The fifth new feature are updates to the resources button and the new button for assignments. So down at the bottom, click create and then assignment. Now go to attach and what you'll see is the options to attach different assignments are right here, including the new reading progress. That's rolling out very soon as well. And for the new file, I click new and there are options to add things as well here. So I can create a brand new Word document, click done. The sixth new feature is fluent UI updates in Teams Mobile. I'm here in the Teams mobile app and we've updated a bunch of the icons and the UI to the new Fluent model to make it more modern. For example, I'm gonna go over to Assignments and if I go here, you're gonna open up an assignment and see a bunch of nice UI updates. I can tap on Attach or New and in the lower right, the Immersive Reader button is much more prominent. You can see I opened it up here. So browse around Teams Mobile for EDU and you'll see a bunch of UI updates and improvements to make it more pleasing. The seventh new feature is that we've raised the limit on the number of students you can make an assignment to. The previous maximum was 200 and now we've made it so you can push out an assignment to 300 students all at once. And that also applies to the class notebook as well. I'm not gonna show a demonstration here, but just note that the new limit is 300. The eighth and final new feature is that we have shipped our assignments and education APIs. 
That means that any partner or any IT administrator can now use our APIs programmatically to do some really cool things with Microsoft Teams assignments. I'm here on the page that has all the documentation and all the details, but if you or your school are interested in exploring how these education APIs work, you can start to do lots of really interesting integrations and customize things with Teams assignments. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.